uh, position of the 2D tracking data null all the way up until our, the beginning of our shot here. So you can see it, how it moves along. And you'll notice the light doesn't actually move along with it, which was kind of the whole point of actually moving our null. Now the reason for that is simply because the default setting for the light here in the effects controls is to have the obscuration type be set to alpha. So we want to switch that to RGB and that's going to give us the result that we want. Alright, so if you remember in our last lesson, we also didn't really touch the global brightness and global scale. Now the reason for that is simply because we'll want to animate those over the course of the shot in order to get some variation in our light. Now we're going to be dealing with multiple lights and that can really mean going into each effect over and over in order to adjust the keyframes to get the look that we want. We definitely could do that, but it can also get to be time consuming. So let's look at a way that we can hook up our global brightness and global scale, basically the parameters that we want to animate to a single node that we can then use to animate our effects. So to do that, I'm going to use a null. So I'm going to come into layer, new, null object, rename this light effects animations. There we go. Now let's add in our effect controls. So come into effect, expression controls, add in a slider control. This will be the glow GB for global brightness. Hit Control D in order to duplicate, and this will be our Glow GS for global scale. Now, really, all we need to do is to create an expression exactly like we did before in order to hook up the position of our null light factory light to our 2D tracking data, except this time we're going to hook in the global brightness and global scale for the light to these sliders right here. So I'm going to hop into my... Uh, light effect glow and the global brightness and global scale I'm gonna hold down alt left click in order to open up the expressions I'm also going to select my null here and open up my slider so hit E in order to get to the effects on the layer open up the sliders we want to connect the global brightness to the slider for global brightness and global scale to the slider for global scale. Very cool. So now that we have that connected, let's see what we have. So if I come in and scrub through until we have this somewhere on screen. Should be able to adjust our global brightness and global scale here and get something in our shot. There we go. So really what we've done is we've almost uh, transported just those two parameters to a new layer. And this is really going to help us save some time because we can basically take the parameters that we want to animate, in this case, the global brightness and global scale, and put them onto a single node so we have all of our keyframes for our lights on a single node. Just makes it easier to find what we're going to be animating. All right, so now we're ready to start adding in our other lights and hook them up with this setup. So let's actually move on to our next lesson in order to do that. It's really for the core of most of our effects. Now, I'm sure you're tired of hearing it by now, but just because we use those doesn't really mean you can't use any others. In fact, in some of our shots, we did have to add in some other lights in order to get the effect. So I'd really encourage you to try some different lights and really get customized with this. With that said, let's add in some lights for our shot here. So I'm going to come into the light effects layer and add in some other lights. So first one is going to be no light factory. I'm going to add in the photon spike ball. I'm also going to come in and add in the star caustic. And then I'm going to actually come in and take the glow that we have and hit control D in order to duplicate that. So that way we'll have a couple glows. Our photon spike ball the star caustic, and then our unmalt that lets us be able to see all of them all at once. All right, so just like we did with our glow, let's start by adjusting some of our parameters. So for our second glow here, 
Uh, we already have this hooked up with our location. Uh, we will come in and adjust the global brightness and global scale so that they're hooked up to a new uh, expression control there. Now let's come in and maybe adjust our ramp scale. Bring that down just a little bit. I'm just kind of tweaking it so that's not exactly the same as the other one. Just kind of break things up a little bit. Adjust our ring scale. Bring that down. Uh, bring the gamma down. And maybe even change the color. So instead of having this be a light orange, maybe a little bit of a darker orange here in our shot. Now I'd also like to come in and adjust our other lights. So let's adjust the photon spike ball. I'm actually going to come in and turn off the glow here and our star caustic just so we can really focus on one light at a time. So let's adjust our photon spike ball. So I'm going to adjust the angle to be about 21 degrees. Uh, you can kind of see the effect there. Now we haven't hooked it up to this uh, position yet, but we'll do that here in a second. I also want to come in, maybe adjust the element scale, bump that down a little bit so it's not quite as large there. Adjust the count, bring that down to four. And once again, adjust the color. So maybe something similar to what we did with our glow here, make it a light, kind of a light orange. There we go. Now the last thing I want to adjust is the star caustic. So I'm going to turn that guy on. And really not tweaking a whole lot here, just going to come in and maybe adjust the scale and the brightness. This is really just going to add a little bit of a nice, uh, almost like a lens effect to our actual lights. Great. Okay, so now that we've tweaked our parameters, let's hook up these new lights to our meteor and our animation null. So first things first, let's hook up the actual uh, effects controls. It's basically the same thing that we did in our last lesson. So I'm going to come into my light effects animation, add in a new expression control. This is going to be for the Glow 2, global brightness. Duplicate that. Glow 2, global scale. Duplicate, control D. This is the spike ball, global brightness. Duplicate, control D again. This is spike ball, global scale, and this is our caustic, global brightness, and caustic, global scale. There we go. So we've got all of our sliders created. Now we just need to hook them up with our expressions. So once again, this process is exactly the same as what we did before. I'm going to open all of these guys up here. And let's come in and hook them up. So let's do the glow two first. So we already have an expression hooked up with this and this is actually just because what we did was we duplicated our initial glow. So this is hooked up. If you look at the expression here, you'll see, hide that a little bit so we can see a little bit easier here. You can see this is hooked up to glow GB, not our glow two GB. So we want to adjust this to be hooked up to these sliders here instead of the initial ones. And once again, this is really just a matter of coming in, alt clicking to disable that, and then alt click, bring that back. Let's uh, turn on our the rest of our layer here so we can get our pick whip and drag that in. So our brightness, scale, very good. Now let's do the same thing for our photon spike ball, alt left click. To get to our expression, this is going to be the global brightness for the spike ball, global scale for the spike ball. We can kind of close these guys once we've got them connected, kind of give ourselves a little bit more room to work with here. And our star caustic, so global brightness, global scale. Pick with those guys. Very cool. So now we've got all of those connected. The last thing we really need to do is to hook up our light's position to the tracker, just like we did with our first uh, glow light. So once again, let's hop into our timeline here. 
Now for the Glow 2, we actually already have that connected because once again, we duplicated the Glow and that was already connected. So we don't even really need to touch this one here. All we need to do is to hook up the spike ball, which is this guy here. So I'm going to Alt left click in order to open up the expression, give ourselves a little bit more room and pick whip this down to the position of the 2D tracking data and the next one is our star caustic so alt left click to our expression pick whip down to the position of the 2D tracking data and everything should be hooked up so let's look and see what we've got if we turn on our first glow we can see this guy here Actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn all of these on. Let's control them with our new sliders that we set up. So if we increase the glow, we should see that. Very cool. It moves along with our light, or with our meteor, rather. Very cool. Let's reset that to zero. Let's try our next glow. So let's crank this guy up. Very cool. Moves along with our meteor, just like we want. Let's reset that. Let's try our next one here. Crank that up. Very cool. We got our effect. And it moves along with our meteor. Now the last one here, this caustic, uh, we won't really notice it moving along with our meteor. And that's really because of the nature of the effect. So if you notice, it's going to show right around here. But as we move this, you'll notice that it's actually going to move on our screen. So if you think of something like, almost like a lens flare, right? So if you notice uh, when a, a lens flare is not really going to be exactly in the same location as the light. It's really almost uh, a reflective aspect. So that's really kind of what this caustic is going to give us is just something that's going to almost be almost exactly like a lens flare. It's really just going to help add a little bit more realism to our shot. Very cool. So everything is hooked up exactly the way that we want, and it's ready to be animated. So let's move on to our next lesson, where we'll look at animating our lights. It won't be the same for every shot. It's really most true with animation. So I'd really encourage you to take your time, look in some reference, and make sure your animation is spot on. So in this lesson, really let's focus on some of the techniques that we used for animating our shot more so than the actual values. So we set up in our previous lesson, we set up this light effects animation layer. It's really going to help us move along very, very quickly. Because now what we can do is we can just come in and focus on the keyframes. So if you've looked at media reference, you'll see that really there's often a big flare that happens when the meteor hits the atmosphere and then the light kind of dies off. So let's have that happen right before our meteor goes behind the house. So we scrub through our shot here. Looks like our meteor is going to go behind the house right around a little after 12 seconds. So maybe closer to 13 seconds. So let's have our uh, big light effect happen here. And then we can have the light kind of die off as it goes behind the house. All right, so I'm going to come in and work one light at a time. So I'm going to start with the glow, global brightness. So I'm going to bump this guy up here, give us some light. Now, if we were to crank this up, you're really going to see a couple different things. The first thing here, I'm going to crank this up. Oop, not that much. <laughs> there we go. So you see a couple different things. The first thing is that obviously the light is in front of our house. Now, we can fix that by taking our light effects layer and moving it underneath our foreground. So now the light is going behind the house, which is what we would expect. The other thing that we'll notice is if we zoom in here, it might be kind of hard to see on the video, but there's actually some banding going on here in the light itself. So if you come across this in your project, you may need to come in, and rather than working with 8 bits per channel, we switch this to 16 bits per channel for our color depth. So that will get rid of a lot of the banding that we have in our light effect. 
All right, so let's come back to our animation here. And let's actually apply some keyframes. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit so it's not quite so bright. There we go. Add in a key, maybe move forward a few frames. Really start to crank this up so it's really bright. Hit U so we can see our keyframes, and then it's going to start to die off. So set it back down to zero. So really at this point, all I'm doing is just coming in and blocking this together. I'm going to hit Control Shift H to hide that on there so we can kind of see what's going on. So we have our light throughout our entire shot all the way up to this keyframe where it's really going to get bright and then it's going to die down. All right, so what I'm going to do is actually use these exact same frames to set the other keyframes for the light. So once we have our uh, rough animation blocked in, then we can go in and start to add variation and move the keyframes across different frames. All right, so let's work with the, the second glow that we have here. So I'm going to come in, add a key, uh, maybe bump this up just a little bit so we've got a little bit of light. Move forward to the next keyframe so we can use the little arrows here. We can use the shortcut K in order to get to the next key on this particular layer. Really start to crank this up. Uh, we can't see that particular key because we just added it in. So if we hit U a couple times, basically that will uh, minimize the layer and then open it back up with any effects or any parameters that have keys. And since we added them onto our second glow, we'll see that in there. Move forward to the next keyframe and then have this die out. Very good. Let's move on to our spike ball now. So I'm going to move to the beginning, the first keyframe. Now, for the spike ball, I don't really want it to show up until this big effect. So I'm just going to have it show up here. It might be kind of hard to see behind this uh, big glowing, but we can kind of adjust that here in a little bit. Move forward, have it die, setting our initial keyframes here. All right, now for the caustic, once again, I'm also going to set this to be absolutely nothing and then go to have it crank up. There we go. Go forward and then have it die off. There we go. So we have our base keyframes here that we can see. So we go from our regular light, our meteor, to really a big burst of light, and then it's going to die off. So we can really start to tweak this now and get the look that we want. So maybe we don't want quite as much glow so we can see some of that spike ball in there. Maybe crank up the spike ball, bring our glow down a little bit our various glows. There we go. Bring these down quite a bit so we can see that. You can see a little bit in there. A little bit of realism in there. So we can continue to tweak these different parameters and so on. Once we have the look that we're going for, uh, we can start to adjust where these are on our timeline. So maybe rather than having them all at the exact same time, just start to break it up. So just kind of start, starting to move these around a little bit just so everything isn't exactly at the same time. It's really going to start to add some realism because you'd expect to see more kind of some flickering effect and you're not really going to get that if everything is happening at the exact same time. It really just starts to look like it's computer graphics when everything is happening exactly at the same time. So really starting to break it up, get some variation in there is a really good idea. And I also recommend coming in and adding in some animations 
to the lights throughout the rest of our shot. So rather than just happening here, maybe coming in and adding in some animation in here. You know, come in, add a couple keyframes, maybe bring things down quite a bit. So it really starts to have a flickering effect on the actual lights themselves. So I may continue to tweak this animation a bit between lessons in order to get something I'm a little more happy with. And I really encourage you to do the same. Or you can open up the project files to see what my final results were. But you can really start to see how this is coming together with the setup that we've created. All right, so let's move on to our next lesson where we'll wrap up our meteor effect by looking at how we can add in some lens effects and tweak some of the keyframes in here, just kind of change things around a little bit. I'd really encourage you to spend some time going in there, tweaking the animation, looking at real media reference, and then coming back and changing how your lights are animated. Feel free to add in more keyframes, add in maybe even some more lights, and really start to uh, change the effect for your shot. But if you've looked at reference for real meteors, you'll notice that there's almost always some sort of crazy exposure that happens whenever the meteor has that big flash. Well, the reason for that is usually because the camera is something like a phone that has an automatic exposure, and it's trying to compensate for all of that extra light that's happening really quickly. Well, we can fake that in our shot by animating our shot's exposure. So let's look at how we can do that. I'm going to come in and add an adjustment layer. So first I'm going to actually minimize all of these just to give ourselves a little bit more room to work with here. Let's come into Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. This will be our lens effects. So an adjustment layer is basically going to affect everything underneath it. So if we add this at the top, all of the layers underneath are going to be affected by that adjustment layer, which in this case is exactly what we want because we want the exposure to adjust over the entire shot. So now that we have our adjustment layer, all we need to do is to come in and create our effect. So come into Effect, Color Correction, Exposure. We've added that in. Now all we really need to do is come in and animate it exactly like what we've done before. So maybe right around uh, this first burst right here. Come in, add a keyframe, and really start to crank it up. Uh, you can see what happens when we really start to crank up our exposure. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Hit U in order to show our keyframes, and then have it start to die out. I'll just set it back down to zero. So you can see what's going on here. As our lens of, or our, our light effects happens, rather, our lens effects will also start to have an effect. So really where you can see this, one of the bigger areas that you can see this is up in the sky. So watch what happens as I scrub through. It's normal. We have that, and all of a sudden the sky really completely changes. And that's something that you see when you uh, look at an actual meteor. That footage or the camera is really trying to compensate for all of that extra light. And so the whole sky changes. Now you can really go crazy with this. Rather than just using exposure, maybe come in and add uh, brightness and contrast or levels. Or maybe come in and add some curves and animate those. Really encourage you to take some time and really start to polish this shot in order to get it to look really, really nice. So now that we've really done 90% of the work, I'd really encourage you to take this the extra 10% to polish things. Use the techniques we've learned throughout this course. Uh, adjust your light effects, your lens effects to really create your final shot. Now personally, I often like to add in maybe even a little bit of grain over everything. It really helps to seal everything together because you start to get a consistent grain across the entire frame. So it may be very subtle because you may not even see the grain itself, but it'll be there, and subconsciously, you'll know that it's there. It's consistent across everything. So we can do that once again, very similar to what we've done with our exposure. Just come in, 
effect, noise and grain, add our grain. If we zoom in, we can see how this is going to affect our meteor trail here along with our actual footage. I'm going to adjust my viewing mode to be the final output. I'm also going to adjust the color, have it be monochromatic, maybe come in and bump down the intensity quite a bit. So just a little bit of grain. You can see a little bit there and it's uh, going over our meteor as well which is really just helping to add that little bit of polish. Awesome. So really the final step of this is to render out our final shot with the original audio. So if you remember from uh, one of our very first lessons, uh, one of the very first things we did was to take our footage and break it up into an image sequence. But we left that footage in our project. So now we can bring that in. Let's take our original footage, pull it all the way in here. We can turn off the visibility because all we really want is the audio. And now we're ready to render this out. So control shift slash in order to add to our render queue. We can use something like uh, maybe just an H.264. If we want to export this to something that would be good for uh, uploading to somewhere like YouTube. And we can just set this off to render. Very, very cool. Now, as I mentioned throughout this course, there's really no end to how much this can be tweaked in order to get vastly different looks. So feel free to take this, run with it, keep tweaking and modifying until you're happy with your final shot. Now, in our next lesson, we'll wrap up this course by switching gears and taking a couple of minutes to look at one of the more difficult meteor shots that we tackled to show you how we went about taking the techniques that we've learned in this course and applying them to another shot and some of the ways that we tweaked and modified things in order to get a polished shot we've got. So obviously it is a very different shot than what we worked on throughout this course, uh, but we have a very similar meteor look going through it. There are some differences in there, I'm sure, but the core techniques are exactly the same. All right, so let's hop into After Effects and look at this. So here is the project that was used to create that shot. Now, at first glance, it might look like there's some very different things in here, but really the techniques are exactly the same. So if we start at the bottom of our shot here, we have a bunch of uh, reference, like our 3D camera tracking data and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but if you notice, in this particular shot, there's a lot of movement in the beginning of the shot in particular. Because there is so much movement, we actually had to break up this shot into multiple sequences that you can see right here in order to get the track to work properly. Now, the techniques for doing the track were exactly the same as what we did before. It just took a lot more time in order to actually get it done right. Now, the same is really true for the meteor light effects that we did. So if we move in our timeline here, we can see the light effects. I'm going to hit Control shift h to hide that. And there we go. So we can see our light effects here. And we actually have it broken up into really multiple different layers. So there's one with the meteor flow. If we move over to our effects control, we can see all the different lights that we used. Uh, very similar to a lot of the lights that we used in our course, although we did add some more in there. Again, feel free to use really whatever works best for your shot. But we actually took this a step further and broke up the lights into multiple layers to really help break them up. So if you notice, uh, let's scroll down here, we have a little flare. So if I turn this off, you can see the difference there. So adding quite a bit of glow there. And really all that this is, this is... Uh, no light factory glow light that's been added there. So very similar technique. We have the light source location that's been uh, tied to a two, the 2D uh, camera tracking data with an expression. Well, really, we've just broken it up to help add an extra little bit of polish to the shot. Now, if we continue to move through this, uh, you also notice a lot of different lens effects. So just like what we added before. So for example, we have our exposure, which is our sky exposure, very similar to what we uh, did in our shot. 
Uh, you'll notice this is actually an adjustment layer. Now, if you remember from the last lesson when we added an adjustment layer, adjustment layers will affect anything beneath them. So by placing this not at the top, really all we're doing is affecting everything beneath it. So if you notice, our image sequence of our background is beneath it. But most of the actual flare and the meteor itself is really above it. So this exposure is only affecting really the background, which is pretty much just the sky. So if we turn this off, we can see the difference here that's happening. Now if I hit U, you'll notice that we actually animated this exposure quite a bit in order to get a very different look in the sky when the meteor actually starts to uh, light up. So if I turn this off now, you'll see a very, very different look that we used with this exposure. Once again, pushing it to another level, we actually uh, added in more effects. So rather than just exposure, we actually also animated desaturation. So if we hit U on this here in order to show our keyframes, you can see we actually animated the saturation of the whole shot itself. So if we turn this off and on, you can see, especially in the sky, if we zoom in a little bit here, you'll be able to see a little bit more. Turn this off and on. You can see it's a very slight and very subtle effect, but by compounding all these different effects together, that's how we're able to get the final shot. So as you can see, all of the core techniques are the same. We've really just added layers to the techniques to focus on getting the look that we needed instead of focusing on the parameters and values themselves. So I'll make sure to include this in the project files so you can open it up and see exactly how we did everything. But that brings us to the end of this course. Now if you do create your own meteor shots, please let us know. And I really hope that throughout this course, you've had as much fun learning how we tackled creating the meteor shots as we did actually creating them. Now, if you're not already a subscriber, we've got thousands of CG and VFX tutorials and the world's largest online creative training library over at digitaltutors.com. So even though in this particular course, we didn't go over a lot of the basics of the tools that we used, if there's any time in this course where you felt like things were going a little fast, then the chances are very good that we've got training to help you get up to speed. Thanks for watching.